Today we're going to see how the Jetson AGX Thor got 3.5 times faster at running LLMs in only about five weeks. When we look at the results of the benchmark, our attention is drawn to two important sets of numbers. The first is that the output token generation speed has increased significantly, especially at larger batch sizes. It's about 35% faster at a batch size of 1 and 3.5 times faster at a batch size of 8. The more obvious gain is the change in time to first token. It has decreased by two orders of magnitude. It's the same hardware. The speed up was all in software. Let me show you how. Before we get to it, I want you to know about the NVIDIA Jetson Holiday Sale. The Jetson AGX Thor is 20% off. The Jetson AGX Orin is 50% off. The Jetson Orin Nano remains at $249. The first thing to understand about large language models is this. They don't understand words, they understand geometry. When you type a prompt, the model doesn't see language. It sees tokens, and each token becomes a vector in a very large mathematical space. The model itself is just a clever layout of billions of learned parameters, the weights, which are numbers stored in matrices. Let's go through an example. We'll use the excellent transformer explainer. This uses GPT too small. This may feel like a toy compared to Llama 70B, but it works in the same manner. The size of the matrices are just significantly smaller. Let's predict the next word. And transformers are, at their core, geometry machines. They project the input vectors, calculate similarity between them, and perform transformations to map them to the output space. Graphics math, running on GPU hardware, designed for that very purpose. Inside every transformer layer, two big compute blocks run back to back. Self-attention and the MLP block. In attention, each token asks, which other tokens in this context matter to me? To do that, the model uses three weight matrices to create three new vectors. Then the core work begins. The model performs a massive pairwise comparison, which is the second major gem, to see how every query vector aligns with every key vector. This result is the attention score matrix. These scores are then normalized and used to combine the value vectors. Finally, the result is passed through an output projection, the final gem, to map the aggregated values back into the desired space. So even the attention block, conceptually simple, requires at least four major gems to fully execute and produce its output. Now the MLP block, the multilayer perceptron, is where the model applies its deep, non-linear function. This process involves three steps, with two huge stacked matrix multiplies. One expansion, which gives the model enormous space to apply its learned knowledge. Two, the model applies a non-linear activation to learn complex relationships and give the vectors meaning. 3. Output tox compression, a final gem that returns the vector to its original size for the next layer. These expansion and compression steps are huge gems and represent the single largest compute load in the entire model. This process is repeated for every transformer layer in the model. Final transformation occurs after the last layer. The output vector goes through one last gem, the unembedding layer. To generate raw scores for every word in the vocabulary, the model then samples the final token based on the resulting probability distribution. Bottom line, a single transformer layer runs 6 to 10 big gems in two full context scans, and that's 95% of all inference flops. One thing that some people miss is that it is a two-step process to produce the first output token. First, in what we call prefill, the entire context goes through the model layers. This builds a cache of the relationships of all the words in the context. This is called the key value cache, or KV cache. We'll talk about this important structure a bit later. The second time through, in what we call token generation, we take the last token of the context and send it through the same process again. One difference is that instead of calculating K and V values for the entire context, we look those values up in the KV cache. We only need to calculate Q for the token. At the last output stage, we do the next token prediction. That next token is added to the KV cache and becomes the input, starting the process all over again. You'll hear this referred to as one token at a time. This is repeated until the model believes it has a satisfactory answer. During prefill, the model turns the prompt into keys and values for the KV cache. That usually starts from a shared base prefix. The system prompt policies may be a few-shot header. Once the server is warm, that base prefix tends to stay cached. 
In the August setup, a lot of that effective prompt still got recomputed for each request, even when big chunks hadn't really changed. In our benchmark, you can think of it like sending very similar prompts over and over. The GPU keeps doing almost the same expensive prefill work again and again. With automatic prefix caching, VLLM hashes the prompt prefix and checks whether those KV blocks are already in memory. If they are, it reuses them and only computes K and V for whatever is new at the end of the prompt. In our repeated prompt benchmark, once the shared prefix is cached, almost all of the heavy prefill cost disappears. And time to first token drops by nearly two orders of magnitude. We didn't make prefill magically cheaper. We turned the KV cache into a shared asset and stopped redoing the same work for the same text. Next up is memory. VLLM's paged attention treats the KV cache a bit like a tiny virtual memory system. Instead of insisting on one big, perfectly contiguous block per conversation, it breaks the cache into fixed size pages and maps those pages into whatever free regions are available. On a unified memory system like Jetson Thor, that's a big deal. It cuts down fragmentation and lets you keep more conversations resident at once. Now let's talk about the attention kernels. The September container pulls in high performance backends like Flash Infer and Xformers. Think of them as performance parts for attention. Instead of running attention as a long chain of tiny steps, they replace it with a few fused, highly tuned kernels that do the job much more efficiently. Under the hood, these backends tile the computation so more of Q, K, and V stay on chip and far fewer trips go out to DRAM. Flash Infer goes a step further. It understands paged and shared prefix KV layouts, so it works hand in hand with paged attention and APC. That's why the gains really show up at higher batch sizes. Once you've got multiple requests in flight, these fused layout-aware kernels keep the GPU fed. In the batch 8 numbers, you can see it directly. Intertoken latency drops from around 500 milliseconds to under 200, and throughput more than triples. A transformer layer isn't one big kernel. It's thousands of little ones. In the August setup, the CPU had to launch them one by one, paying a launch tax every time. The GPU would finish its work, then stall while it waited for the next kernel to show up. VLLM uses CUDA graphs to record big chunks of those patterns, sequences of kernels and their dependencies. Then it replays them as a single command. After a short warm-up, the CPU sends a pre-recorded graph instead of micromanaging every kernel. That slashes launch overhead and shrinks the idle gaps. Combine that with continuous batching, grouping compatible requests into shared work, and the GPU spends a lot more time doing math and a lot less time waiting. We're not going line by line through the VLLM change log, but this is the most likely explanation. Put it all together. Less redundant pre-fill, better memory packing, faster attention under load, and lower launch overhead. That's how you get from the August numbers to the September numbers. Step back and the pattern is pretty obvious. We didn't swap in a new Jetson. We didn't change the model. We didn't invent more flops. What changed is that the software stack finally started treating Jetson Thor like the GPU it actually is. Automatic prefix caching stops us from rebuilding the same KV cache over and over, so time to first token falls off a cliff. Paged attention lets unified memory stay packed with active conversations instead of wasting space. Flash Infer and Xformers bring in attention kernels that understand that paged layout and keep the GPU busy when multiple users are in flight. CUDA graphs and better batching strip away a lot of the CPU side launch overhead, so there's less dead time between kernels. The hardware didn't get three and a half times faster. The model didn't suddenly go on a diet. The difference is that by September, the software stopped fighting the architecture and started working with it. And once that happened, the three and a half times speed up stopped being surprising. Mm -hmm.